welcome everyone welcome to the second episode uh, of uh, in conversation with uh, vishyanand before i uh, welcome anand i would like to share one one of the funniest incident that i had with uh, anand uh, this happened during uh, world rapid and blitz uh, which took place in berlin so we were traveling together from uh, frankfurt to berlin and uh, yeah we arrived in the berlin railway station and then took a taxi uh, anand was staying in one hotel and i was staying in a different hotel so our idea was uh, first to drop anand and then the same taxi will uh, drop me in my hotel on the way uh, the, the cab driver uh, he, who was a very friendly guy he spoke about various things with us uh, starting from you know ge- the ge- german politics the traffic weather and we had very nice chat and uh, anand was dropped and uh, then as i was going towards my hotel uh, the cabbie asked me so where do you live in india so i said yeah i live in kolkata and he's like oh i'm sorry i don't know much about uh, kolkata i haven't heard much about uh, that and uh, the, the only thing i know about uh, uh, about uh, india is uh, vishyanand and i was like what what did you just say he's like yeah the only thing i know uh, about uh, india is vishyanand and i asked him do you know whom you dropped uh, just now he's like no is like uh, i said that was uh, vishyanand and that was probably uh, a not so wise thing i said because the guy could not drive anymore like he's like what what did you say he was vishyanand it turned out the guy is a big chess fan but he simply could not believe that uh, you know the great anand was sitting in his taxi i found this very uh, funny and uh, yeah later i told anand also about this incident and we had a good laugh about that so with that note uh, let me welcome uh, vishwanath anand hi anand how are you doing hi so good uh, i was just telling the uh, our berlin story do you remember this uh, taxi driver yeah i remember that one yeah <clears throat> so yeah <coughs> so today uh, i want to ask mostly questions related to the world championship matches okay and uh, yeah i'll start with uh, the following that in any world championship match a uh, huge amount of emotions uh, are involved emotion stress and so on for uh, for any player you know even day to day mundane issues can unnerve them and emotion sorts of sorts of creeps in in the mind and in world championship match uh, this is huge i want to know if you do if you practice meditation or some kind of mental training to deal with uh, such emotional uh, to control your emotion and to handle stress do you do any special training for this um no i i would say that at most what i do is uh, i i let it go in a sense um you can't fight it too much um or at least that would involve tricking yourself somehow um maybe the the thing is just to acknowledge to yourself that um you are starting to feel the tension you are starting to become edgy everything starts to bother you and um uh, just try to manage with that because some of it is positive i mean in a sense um when you are getting ready for a big match some amount of tension is normal and the right. tension is good because it means you will concentrate better the next day no, but that's, that's a very uh, nice way of, to put it yeah but every little bit starts to bother you and then uh, you become too touchy that's the negative side but um i think i, I again i try to understand why this is happening and then not uh, fret about it too much right 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 so uh i remember this uh, incident in uh, qatar uh, world rapid in 2016 you lost one mm-hmm. particular game and then we are having a chat and you told me you know i am i think i am becoming more of a classical player i should not play rapid you know as i am getting old i should play more classical tournament and not play rapid i intuitively believe sort of trusted that i should not believe you when you say such things the next thing i see is next world rapid you are world rapid champion we have seen this number of times 
when nobody expects you to win you 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 have won so many tournaments uh, another biggest example is uh, the candidates after chennai match so like you are like the king of comebacks so i want to know how you deal with failures and the burden of expectation like when i play a game i don't have you know like that that amount of expectation when you are playing the entire nation wants you to win every single tournament so how do you deal that and how do you cope with failures okay so i mean in doha i was quite serious i mean i didn't only tell you i told uh, uh, pakko bhaiya as well and uh, he also laughed and he said yeah i know but you will play next year and in fact i carried out my threat i was not going to play in riyadh uh i kramnik insisted uh, you or something like that no No, no, no. That was for the candidates, I but uh, for Riyadh, for Riyadh, I was just not going to play. I mean, I was quite disillusioned with how um, I played in uh, both Berlin and Doha, and I thought, what's the point of kidding myself? I don't want to play. But then, uh, strangely enough, Polina from the FIDE office, yeah. she spoke to Aruna and said, "You know, um, this event is going to be spectacular." I mean. the saudis are really going to put up a great show right why didn't you persuade anand to play and then aruna asked me uh, she told me you know what's the worst that can happen mm-hmm. um and of course i i said what the worst could happen i mean i would go there and feel like it's too bad but um somehow at the end of it she said well she said this is going to be a really nice event and i don't like missing uh nice events and this one seemed like a special one um so in fact what happened was on the 26th aruna and akil went for holiday in uh, kerala right uh, together with uh, leo batesti from the organizer from corsica uh-huh. from a whole great friend of mine who my I mean I played so many events in corsica uh-huh. and uh, he had decided, we had finally coordinated a holiday together in So the idea was uh, Leo and Nicole would fly in from uh, France, uh, of course, I should say, and then they they would play in. Um, I mean, uh, we would all go on holiday together. Uh, the idea was to spend five days in Kerala, uh, and that way, you know, he has taken me on many nice holidays in Corsica, and I want to uh, do that here. But what happened in the end was so I I went off to Saudi Arabia. Mm-hmm. Uh, I remember. I remember connecting with you and saying, uh, "When uh, when did you arrive?" Like we all. That's true. That's true. Yeah. But because you were in some hotel somewhere. Yeah, yeah. And um, and then I got. And then what happened was after the tournament finishes, I uh, was going to join them. Mm-hmm. Um, basically, I would arrive on thirty first afternoon. Right. And um, celebrate New Year's with them and come back. Mm-hmm. Um, it was. A, I mean, I went to Saudi Arabia with mixed feelings, and if I had a bad tournament, I would have really kicked myself. But uh, of course, then it went like a dream. I mean, not only I won, did well in the rapid, I did extremely well in the blitz as well. That's true. That's true. And um, in Doha and Berlin, both tournaments went down the flames, and I was generally in a bad mood. But um, that was very nice. And of course, in Petersburg, uh, normal service resumed, and uh, after that, I'm happy the rest. I didn't play most goals. <laughs> uh, I mean, I was in Petersburg. I was just kicking myself. I, I said I should have stopped after the other championship the year. But um, yes, it's, it's. I mean, sometimes some events go fantastic. I mean, in uh, Riyadh, afterwards, I had to thank Polina because Riyadh was uh, easily the best organized of the lot. and um, and on top of that i played extremely well and uh, you know you have such unbelievable memories uh, right. but it wasn't supposed to be that mm-hmm. so in a way like uh, can i can we say that uh, you play much better when there is uh, when you are not expecting anything when you are just going going in a tournament when uh, you don't have any particular uh, expectation is that Is that a way to yes, it? there's a fairly there's a fairly good track record of that happening. So Prague, uh, Hanty Munsis candidates, um, Riyadh, and I'm sure I could find a couple more. Uh, generally, when I don't have expectations, it goes well. But 
Unfortunately, this trick doesn't work if I just tell myself I have no expectations. It, yeah, uh, it actually, I mean, I can't trick myself into believing it because then I would just do it everywhere. But uh, um, it it works when really I have no expectations. So in Prague, I, uh, in Prague, my expectations was just it'll be nice to have one decent tournament and come back and mm. start from there. And uh, Hunty Mansis was the same. I thought top four. I mean, after this uh, terrible match uh, in Chennai, I thought a top four finish, and I can I, at least I'm not embarrassed by how I play. And uh, Riyadh was after uh, the London, where I London, finished yes. minus three, mm -hmm. and uh, completely ridiculous uh, result. And uh, um, so, uh, and the whole of 2017, all my rapid and blitz events had been catastrophic. catastrophic. And um, somehow. Uh, I went to Riyadh and, and in Riyadh, you know, the conditions were so good. I thought 10th place in both tournaments is my dream finish. You know, it's kind and of very I, hard to uh, digest this. I'm sure the viewers will also agree that uh, you are going in a tournament and you are thinking even top 10 would be nice because we are so used to seeing you winning so many tournaments. Like there are literally no tournaments that you have not won. So you, ha you having this mindset that even top 10 will be good. It's kind of very hard to digest for me and I'm sure even for the viewers. Yes, but unfortunately, I mean, sometimes when I hit a, a wall, I get into this mood. And um, then I just, uh, you know, I set the bar quite low so that I'd easily uh, achieve it. And uh, yes, maybe it's a surprising attitude. I think there are people who don't have it. Right. But uh, for me, it's, it's partially there. Right, right. So we have seen, uh, at least that is my observation, that world champions, they are us usually setting trends and also changing trends. So I grew up seeing uh, Kasparov, Kramni, Q, you know, playing all main theoretical lines with heavy analysis and novelties. Uh, I don't remember there were many super tournaments where uh, random lines will be played. You know, we, we, we were not very used to seeing, let's say, Budapest or... Uh, or, or even for that matter, uh, Alekhine or Dutch or, you know, any, any such lines. But with Magnus, uh, after Magnus became a champion and slowly the trend sort of changed. Now in top level tournaments, we see all sorts of openings are being played. And also, I noticed that uh, recently people don't agree for draw in an equal position anymore, which they would have, let's say, in, uh, you know, early 2000 or, you know, 90s. Uh, they keep on playing and it's absolutely fine to uh, keep on playing in an equal position and people are scoring. How do you see this change? Well, I think you named it. Um, I think the problem is now we look back on uh, 20 years ago and 30 years ago with our modern eyes and um, uh, we... I think to really understand, uh, you had to go back then. I mean, in those days, when uh, we would agree all these short draws, it seemed to us that there was really nothing worth playing for. And it's not like um, uh, we were purely lazy. You know, certainly some criticism can be accepted, but um, at some point, people should think, well, I, I have good chances to play here. But people generally seem to feel that uh, things are about equal and... Uh, and then over time, it um, uh, our understanding of these positions developed, and uh, we started to see more and more. I mean, when I when uh, twenty years ago, I thought the Italian was a harmless opening that you played when, uh, in case your opponent forgot his theory, and suddenly you know it's it's more one of the most theoretical lines now. Yeah. So uh, there's been some change. I would say definitely Magnus was ahead of the curve in the sense that he, maybe a couple of years, he was doing this alone, which is to play uh, dead positions, but uh, or what looked like dead positions, but just to keep on trying. And he won a lot of uh, drawn games. But eventually people's understanding catches up. Everyone must ask themselves, well, what is Magnus doing? How is he able to win? Right. And eventually they catch up in their understanding and uh, they also try playing some dead positions for a while. Right. Um, to give an example, I mean, Kramnik used to agree a lot of short draws when he was young. Mm -hmm. sure. And uh, But in fact, recently, he's one of the players who plays the match, or well, 
and maybe say the past tense but he's one of the players who uh, plays the maximum number of moves per tournament absolutely and uh, it seems that he consciously made an effort to understand mangles or understand what is going on and i think computer technology also caught up it showed that in every position there is some life and uh, <clears throat> now it's kind of routine to uh, keep playing and uh, but i think people play because they realize that there is something there mm-hmm. uh, to the viewers um, of course needless to say i have learned a lot from anand uh, chess wise and also uh, as a person as a human being one thing i would like to point out here is uh, when i meet some you know some players they ha- sometimes they have this attitude that they know a lot when i met anand i understood that his knowledge his intelligence his hard work it's is gigantic yet he had this attitude always which was very inspiring for me that he was always ready to learn something new and i have never seen anand saying that yeah i know everything about this if there is anything new he is always willing to learn so i just realized that when he when the guy is sitting there the chess god and he says uh, back then italian uh, opening was different and now it it is different so in a way he admits and he is always ready to learn i think this is what uh, is one of the biggest quality that uh, that one knows that you know like there is no ending for learn, learning it new way uh, yeah thanks anand for inspiring uh, inspiring this like i always felt you 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 are the you are the greatest learner you are like you are adapting you are always changing you are always learning something new thank you that's very nice of you um yes and in fact nowadays i talk about it a lot as well um i it's amazing how many um uh, things that we believed uh, our opinions changed uh, and it's quite fascinating to look back and and think about what are the opinions you had when you were young that you still have what have uh, changed and evolved and uh, in in a few cases you know where do you believe the opposite of what you believed before exactly so uh, but you know the, the world is churning uh, not only in chess but in life in general and uh, so many life is turning out to be so unpredictable right and um, you realize that uh, learning and unlearning is a big part of everything on <clears throat> Un- unlearning on learning is also a very important thing that one should learn and uh, yeah there is one thing this uh, this i was thinking recently like uh, during kramnik match let's say we had uh, we prepared uh, with uh, remote ripka and back then we felt our notes were like bulletproof then some stockfish came and it turned out uh, half of the analysis were you know not standing stockfish subsequently now we have uh, let's say lf uh, lc0 or uh, fat freeze or, or you know like different engines different uh, configuration and we see that most of our old notes are getting improvised or revised well ironically whenever we prepare something with computer we feel very confident we feel like yeah this is it but deep inside i know maybe some in- other engine will come and refute that also but yet that confidence is there what are your thoughts on that why do we feel confident you know despite knowing that this can be refuted anyways um yes the problem is um i think when techno- technology does something better than us and usually the whole point of uh, technology is to uh find some narrow isolated task and do it better than we can do and then we pass it on to you um and you know if you if you read about the history of uh the last several hundred years you'll find many uh people talk about uh, revolutions and understanding and this and that mm-hmm. and if you read it if you read it to the modern perspective you um you know you realize that everything that once seemed modern and brand new now seems historical and uh, true very completely true. outdated very true i mean let's not even go that far let's just talk about chess um it is strange that every every generation of uh, pcs or engines we believe we believe totally mm-hmm. or at least we think um we have double checked something i mean once we would leave something to search depth 16 and we thought okay this is bulletproof and uh, i'm sure that search depth has just kept moving along uh, but uh, what is the point you think i'm not going to lose uh, in the next three moves if 
you know, I've left this machine on for so long. You know, it's that sort of thing. But um, uh, consistently, it's embarrassing to realize that uh, you trusted something so much that is so ridiculous now. We and, have uh, in live. We have Setu Raman here who says uh, it is like he is reading extension of Anand files. And while Vishnu is saying he has not got chance to read around the files, so this is all new to him. Well, thanks Vishnu, thanks Setu for joining <laughs> us. <laughs> yeah, well, um, and and this is uh, it's an it's a very interesting experience. Um, I mean, I remember when uh, uh, we first were working with Ripka, right, in this match in two thousand eight. Chronic, yeah. And it was so exciting because everything it seemed to do something new, and suddenly. You realize all this Fritz and Junior analysis from the past four or five years could be rewritten, and it was fascinating. And now I look back uh, almost kindly, uh, you know, oh, the Zirupka, this baby program we used to have, and something <laughs> like that. And it just evolves like this. Um, yeah, well, what can I say? That's how life is. Amazing. Um, there are many things. There are many things that fascinated me. Thirty years ago, and uh, nowadays you realize, and equally this happens to human beings. I mean, I was amazed to find out um, somebody mentioned some game of mine from '97 or '98 and said, "Oh, you know, I know my classics." <laughs> I was quite surprised, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I'm now in this uh, batch. But yeah. well, then I understood what he meant. But uh, still, yeah. Well, Anish is saying that chat is very classy today. Uh, thank you, Anish. Thank you, Harika and Tomei also for joining us. Uh, moving on to Kramnik match. Uh, so, uh, at some point, uh, Kramnik gave this interview that uh, he lent the title to you and uh, he will take it back. And I remember we worked for like seven months. Here, I would like to tell uh, audience those who uh, those who are not aware about this. So when in first episode I said uh, when after meeting Anand I learned what is the meaning of dedication and hard work. This is what I meant. Uh, our first training camp, which uh, took place in uh, Germany, but so then uh, the typical daily schedule was something like we would start around eleven o'clock and we would finish well past midnight, and there was no one. Yeah, just the uh, Anand and his team, and uh, this went on for months. We would take. break you know like just uh, once in a week and every single minute anand will be there with the team working very thoroughly so this is something i had not seen before so that was the level of dedication now coming back to my question uh, when kramnik said this and i remember for 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 like the seven seven months at some point you decided you will not see any chess website this was a shock for me personally that uh, how it is possible that a chess player will not see any chess website and will not follow any chess news you know that is covering the match i even remember that uh, we were very uh, cautious what to tell you like to make sure we are not talking anything about uh, news reports that are coming in websites we used to pass you the games the tweet in pen drive so that you don't even go to the site and download it and uh, to be honest anand i was uh, completely taken back to see such kind of uh, you know uh, dedication and the persistency level that uh, that you showed for uh, the entire duration of the match so i want to know how it is possible to achieve this kind of persistency well this this must have just been uh, through some experience that's all so um i can i mean i remember that thinking that everything i needed to know about chess i would have from the tweets and you know the games and i didn't need uh, to read uh, what people said but for instance in uh, before the new york match i i made the, I, i don't know how i why i even did it i read some uh, new in chess with uh, asking uh, a dozen grandmasters what uh, what they thought of the result of this match is going to be and um, of course the majority of them sa- said that you know kaspar will win but um, i recall after that for a couple of nights you know arguing with these people mentally in my head you know you just say no but this but that but this and that and then you realize wh- why am i wasting time like this 
um, so subsequently I got a bit better. It's a, probably a cross between superstition and uh, wanting to concentrate. Um, I'll tell you a nice story. In Mexico, I first took the lead after the ninth round. Uh, yeah, where I drew and uh, Vladi was closest, uh, lost to Morozovic. Mm -hmm. And uh, then in the, what was it, the 11th game, um, yeah, we got three rounds before the finish. So the 11th game, um, I beat Morozovic in the last game of the day to finish. So yeah. it was a, a great struggle, very nice sure, game. Yeah, I remember know. this. Mm -hmm. And um, I beat uh, Morozovic and uh, I now had a one point lead or a, it couldn't have been one and a half already. I, I'm not sure, but anyway, one or one, one and a half point lead. And uh, I just felt, and there was a rest day as well the next day. Right, right. Yeah. And you know, this is my, I, I think anyone will appreciate that this is the best kind of thing. Absolutely. You finish. Uh, you you win a game. You come to a rest day, and so and you know that you can indulge yourself a little bit this day because there is still one day to recover and play. Right. right. So I did this, and um, I went to the hotel venue where we were always having dinner, mm -hmm. and uh, Hans Walter came into the restaurant. Mm -hmm. He saw me, and he came and said, "Ah, your Ishi is champion, this and that," and I remember it freaked me out completely. Because I suddenly... Uh, you still had a game to go. I had three games. You are still three games to go. Yeah. And uh, this thing just freaked me out because I... I mean, Hans Walter, of course, you know, one of my best friends. I, sure, yeah. I don't, doubt, I don't doubt his intentions for a moment. But I realized that the problem is if you... Even people who want to motivate you and encourage you will say things and it's not necessarily... They don't understand what will necessarily motivate you and what will have a bad effect on you. Right. And uh, so then I told Aruna the next day, look, I don't want to eat in the hotel restaurant anymore. We will just go out and eat somewhere. And uh, so we immediately found a, a nice restaurant. Um, I mean, Mexico City, you can hardly go wrong. Hmm. So we found a very nice restaurant nearby and we started going there. And that way I didn't see anyone because, you know, there are always arbiters, officials, this guy, that guy, and they're all floating around, yeah. commentators, what have you. And mm -hmm. someone or the other will always come and uh, some of them will be malicious. Mm -hmm. Some of them will say it knowing that uh, it may not have a good effect. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people will do it innocently. Exactly. And, and you it don't affects. have time to argue with them. All, you, all that matters for you is, is that going to have a positive effect on my game? And I, um, I felt that uh, this would not help. Right, right. So I... So I started the thing and then I didn't see Hans Walter for three days, uh, which must have seemed strange to him, but you know, he was busy. Mm -hmm. And uh, on the last day, you know, I could relax. After drawing with Leko, I could relax. In fact, well, my still the Grishchuk game, many accidents could happen. Right. So the point is, even with the big lead, I knew that uh, you can, uh, it's very easy for things to slip up. Mm -hmm. You can think one and a half point is a big lead, but one bad day and then someone is close. Yeah, and then yeah. suddenly the odds and you know, so I, I got this obsession uh, to do that. And then before born, it was very easy. I didn't want to read. Um, again, I don't particularly think Kramnik was doing anything out of the ordinary. Kramnik was just doing the, the stuff that comes, you know, comes with the dinner. Naturally, the stuff happens. It happens before the matches and you do this. But I thought, what is the benefit in me reading this? Um, now, someone like Victor, maybe, I think genuinely was different because Koch and I, Probably it was good for his seconds to bring every magazine and show him. Yeah, and then get into the fighting mode, yeah. Yeah, but for me, I knew that it didn't get me into fighting mode. And uh, I mean, it didn't, uh, it had some sort of uh, effect, bad effect. Maybe the point is I started, uh, it bothered me, but I couldn't channel, channel it in the right way. And I found that I, I played better when I just uh, ignored everyone. Yeah, and also it's, and, not, it's uh, not exactly your style. <laughs> Correct. I mean, in the end, I think you have to understand yourself. And sometimes in life, you have to do things that you cannot justify on universal principles. You have to justify and saying, look, I don't like this. And therefore, I will. you cannot say, is this right or wrong? Um, it may work for other people. It may not work for you. Okay. But if you know yourself and you think, you know, this doesn't suit me, then you just stop doing it. Uh, maybe for Kramnik, it was the opposite. I don't know. Amazing. Um, amazing. Yeah. But so that, that's just what I thought. 
And uh, for Bond, it was quite easy. And uh, then I made it a habit for uh, the matches. And uh, I mean, with Topalo, it was clear that it was a good idea not to read anything. Uh, with uh, Gelfand, probably, with Gelfand, probably it wouldn't have mattered. But, you know, you have your routine and uh, it's best not to upset it. So, right. uh, that was nice. Okay, I'm going to invite some trouble. Uh, but before I ask, uh, ask you the question, uh, I want to share something with the audience, those who, uh, those who are not aware about this. So during Kramnik match, uh, it's very embarrassing for me, but okay, I'll, I'll anyway uh, speak about this. During Kramnik match, I think after game three, uh, it, was, it turned out that I got some kind of infection. And uh, later, it, it, was, uh, it turned out to be that I got chicken pox. And I had to be quarantined, so I was in a different room. Well, trying to still work a bit, but uh, of course not uh, not into that that kind of. Uh, I could not put that kind of hours. And uh, thanks uh, to Aruna, who took tremendous care of me. I mean, without her, I don't know how I would have survived there. So thank you, Aruna, once again. And uh, yeah, so what is like really embarrassing that immediately after the match, both An Anand and Aruna got chicken pox, and which was obviously from me. And I, even today, I thank God that it did not happen during the match because I would have then become a national villain and also I could not have never forgiven myself, you know, for uh, for giving chicken pox to Anand during World Championship match. Coming to my question, Anand, how difficult it is to eat chicken tikka masala while having chicken pox? Okay, I'm glad you brought that up because I would have hesitated to embarrass you. But... Um, um, I mean, I don't even know if I realized it in Bonn or I was impressed later. Uh, because I, but anyway, so after game four, uh, I remember, uh, was it PH would leave the food on your door, knock and then run as if he was, which is probably a very healthy attitude for COVID. Yeah, but yeah. Anyway, he would, <laughs> PH he, would do that, but leave, I think he would that, leave your food on the door, knock twice and then run away. Yeah, and Aruna and, didn't do this. Probably that's how she got it. So Aruna was like, she brought the doctor, she would yeah. take care and everything. Yeah. So So then I'll tell you, I, um, anyway, it, it, luckily I already had uh, a small lead at that point when you were discovered and then uh, my lead doubled and then it tripled. And of course, uh, mm -hmm. that put me in a very good situation and I, um, I mean, essentially, we, we were using you like a deep search because uh, any position that the guys got bored with it. I know. Dumped on I know. I, I'm still annoyed with, uh, angry with Rustam because at some point, uh, there was, everything was solved for the match. So, he was giving... And he was, checking, he was checking his private repertoire. Exactly. Right? He was checking his private repertoire. <laughs> I had no clue. It had got no connection with the game. Yeah, because everything was solved and he was dumping me his own private notes. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> They just thought they saw you as a, a resource that was not being used. But anyway, so I I got back to Spain, mm -hmm. and uh, it turned out uh, Luboyevich was in town, mm -hmm. and I found out about this. So I really called Lubo and said, uh, "Are you in Madrid? Would you like to meet for dinner?" He said, "Yeah, sure. Why not?" So I took my Spanish friend Maurice because yeah. I thought, "Well, it'll be a nice mm -hmm. evening," mm -hmm. and we all met in an Indian restaurant called Ganges. Okay. In uh, Madrid. Okay. So, and there, um, probably I had chicken tikka as well, but you know, uh, it was a very pleasant evening. And luckily, as it turned out, it didn't pass on to Lobo or Maurice, but probably because they had it as kids. Yeah, yeah. None of us had that uh, was very strange. Well, and this was also very irritating because, uh, you know, whenever we call someone for help, first question they didn't ask, first question they asked was not, oh, uh, what help do you need? The first question was, didn't you have it as a kid? Exactly. What am I supposed to say? Yes, I had it as a kid, but I thought I'll try it again. <laughs> yeah, obviously, I did it as a kid. And so, but anyway, so for the for the audience, I'll have to point out that Surya um, was eating, you know, like Surya eats, you know, very healthy appetite and he was doing very well. But um, that didn't strike me as strange when I was in Bonn because I didn't know exactly what chicken pox does to you. But then, so I think November 2nd, maybe, probably November 2nd, I had dinner with Lubo and Mauricio in, in Madrid. And then on November 3rd morning, Aruna and me woke up and we go to brush our teeth. And then I tell her there's something on your face. And she looks at me and says, it's in your face as well. And that's how it started. 
and then uh, we didn't know what was going on. Then we called around, um, and of course, uh, we went to see uh, a, a doctor in Vyalba, and she was Ukrainian, and uh, she. she she couldn't think of anything more interesting to say. Is how romantic both of you got it together. And, she, she actually said that. She said that. <laughs> no, it was just funny. And of course, we breathed a huge sigh of relief that I was not playing anywhere or right, uh, right. magic. And then for the next few days, I found that neither Aruna nor nor me had any appetite. I mean, we could just eat just the absolute minimum. And then I had this delayed uh, bulb, you know. What? What the hell? How much? How could Surya eat that much? <laughs> it's only when you and you yourself have no appetite that we realize what a great appetite you have. I actually, but of course, it's part of it's part, it's part of your legend now. So yeah, I actually increased my appetite during chicken pox. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, moving on to a uh, topple of match. What I always uh, thought and what, what I was curious to know. That uh, in first place, why did you agree to play in Sofia? Obviously, knowing that it will be, it will give Topol of tremendous advantage. That you know, it will be his home ground and so on. Why you agreed to play there? I don't. I don't think it's such a big advantage uh, to play in your home ground. I mean, it could also mean more pressure and so on. And second, um, I think because I had grown up in the area of these two federations. And um, you know, world champion world championship matches happen, then they're cancelled, then they're postponed, then they're merged. Mm -hmm. And uh, between two thousand two and two thousand five, there were sorry, there were no world championship matches except uh, Tripoli. And uh, finally, we had this event in San Luis, which I could play in, and so on. And um, the. I think by by the time I got to 2006 or 7, I was ultra pragmatic. I did not expect the world to work in a certain way. I just thought if something happens, I will play. Uh, I don't have the luxury to sit now and decide where I will play my match and what I will play. And and besides, quite simply, the FIDE matches are pretty complex. You you accept them or you don't. I mean, Silvio and uh, uh, Sofia's also was the best. And. Uh, That was it. Unless I am prepared to go around uh, looking for another event, there, nothing is going to happen. And my own attitude was, uh, uh, you know, I'm just I'm just going to be completely pragmatic, even selfish about it, uh, and play wherever it is, and that's it. And uh, and not, you know, protest or this or that. Because during all these years, I just formed the conclusion that it's a waste of time. Right? Um, It could have been Prague where I got this attitude. It could have been something else, but typically it's a bunch of things. And uh, by this point, I was completely pragmatic. I, I thought my job is uh, just to accept the inevitable and get on with my work. Um, but as it showed, that it's double edged. I mean, certainly Topolov would have a lot of advantages, and uh, but equally, he was under a lot of pressure. And for instance, when we played in Chennai, I didn't feel like I got it. So it's uh, it's not clear that playing at In the home ground is uh, yeah is that bad? Well, Sorry, is that good? Too. Right. Well, now that you brought Prague, suddenly I'm thinking that uh, be it Prague or be it the match with Karpov, huge injustice was done. And I'm just thinking, has it ever bothered you that you you are like the nicest guy? Yeah, like well, you are always uh, getting out of controversy. You are not. Uh, Uh, many times I have seen uh, you taking this attitude that yeah I will not speak I will just give the answer on board. Uh, has it ever bothered you that maybe there are there were some instances like be it Prague or Karpov match where you sh would have you know rather spoke out about this like be a little bit vocal about this? Well, in Prague wasn't an injustice as much as I, I realized that I had uh, got into a situation where people just forgot about me. And uh, they just thought, well, we have to reunify, and these are the people we have to bring in. And uh, I was out of this group. But this, that is the, that is the uh, biggest injustice. Because I was, I was, well, I was kind of used to being always automatically considered. And, uh, but at this point, uh, you know, my performance had dropped for a while. And um, for me, like I said, when I went to Prague, I was focused on simply having one good event. 
Mm-hmm. And you know, when you win it, then you just thought I'm going to enjoy this moment and not uh, think about it too much. But of course, the Kapil match was unjust. But um, I realized afterwards that it doesn't matter very much. Uh, first of all, there are people who uh, think that this is unfair that one player one player gets such privileges and another doesn't. Uh, but they're not going to do anything about it. There are other people who may say this but don't really care, and there are others who probably dis- might dislike you and uh, secretly are happy that it was this way, but you know they don't want to really, don't want to make a big deal about it. And uh, yeah, public sympathy gets you nowhere. Um, wow! Wow! I, I had I had the feeling, for instance, uh, when I saw Rajabo and the candidates this year. I mean, it turned out he had a he had a kind of point. But I knew from my own experience in uh, so in Lausanne. I mean, I could go on screaming how unfair it was, but I you never did that, yeah. I, a, I realized that in first two days, people would say, "Yeah, you're completely right. You know, it's outrageous what happened. You know, Fide should correct it, and so on." And by the third day, they're saying, "Yes, but they lost the first." By the fifth day, you're the only one protesting. So you know, it, it, nothing really going to happen. Um, and you just have to you just have to take your deal. Um, besides, it should be pointed out that uh, while the format was absurd, it was given to us. Uh, they didn't hide Kapoor's uh, privileges at the beginning of it. True. You you were expected to sign and play, and all of us made our pact with the devil. True. All of us made our pact with the devil, except Kranik. The rest of us made our pact with the devil. We just thought uh, um, this money is so good. And you know there is a quandary. On the one hand, you have the best paid event of the last 15 years, or something like that, or outside of a world championship, you have the best best paid event in the last 15 years. And you thought, well, I play tournaments with one tenth of this prize fund enthusiastically because they are great events. Why should I sit this one out? And on the other hand, it seems that if you play this tournament, uh, in this unbelievably attractive tournament, mm-hmm. you then have this one unpleasant duty at the end if you want. But uh, I could have been knocked out in any stage uh, in the prior rounds, and then it would have been a fantastic event, and I would have gone back and shrugged, and it would have been someone else's problem. Yeah. So um, I think it was a bad format. I think though, using the word injustice is incorrect. It, um, you know, you can have some amateur who, for the fun of it, says, "I'll put ten million dollars," and uh, don't the way. The winner of the tournament has to play me in a match of six games. That's not unfair. It's just a, a win, and <laughs> so it was. So, um, first of all, I, I don't think uh, going on and on about things that are unfair. I mean, in the end, we are a sport. We are not uh, a case before a court. We are a sport, and um, uh, you know, events happen, and you have to move, accept it and move on. And uh, I always was pragmatic. Maybe I was conditioned. Maybe this Lausanne match told me. After that, then you have to be quite cynical and uh, uh, look out for yourself, and that's it. Because everybody else is looking out for themselves, and maybe that's the way it is. Well, uh, <clears throat> I want to add a few things to the audience. Uh, definitely, two things I want to add here. Uh, number one, those uh, you know, uh, Anand. Uh, everybody knows Anand wrote an autobiography, which is uh, Mind Masters. Uh, it's a must-buy book for everyone, like every single person. Uh, this is one of my favorite autobiography. And whatever Anand said here, many of the things are mentioned there also, and it's it's written in a beautiful way. So I, those who has not bought it, I would I would strongly recommend. This is number one thing that I wanted to say, and second thing I wanted to say was uh, when we are talking about you know like uh, negotiating and uh, dealing with uh, fee day or the organizers or uh, the the team maybe topple of team or, or whatever, uh, we I simply cannot forget. The the gigantic role played by Aruna. I, I I can simply never forget this in my life, and I can say this on record that uh, whatever contribution, combination of all the seconds made, it will never match what Aruna did. So uh, I have lots of more questions, but uh, that is for the next episode when Aruna will be there. Uh, related to that, no, Anand, you are not going right now. I have some more questions before I let you go. Oh. <laughs> so, yeah. So uh, there's one thing uh, that I was uh, thinking other day. Uh, 
this happened pretty much in every match but okay let me come to gelfand match so first of all nobody expected that uh, your opponent will be gelfand even when the kazan candidates was uh, taking place it was yes. like, uh, like a bit surprise and uh, gelfand came remarkably well prepared after i remember after our first few white games we simply had nothing to offer because we neither we expected sveshnikov nor we expected grunfeld so basically after our one first e4 game and first d4 game we had nothing to offer you and uh, many times like in many other matches but mostly let's say gelfand match many times it would happen that uh, let's say around 10 o'clock you will say good night and go to bed while the team is working and again to the audience Uh, during a match if we get sleep of 4 hours or 5 hours it's a blessing because we'll be working throughout and uh, don't get me wrong this is not even 5% of what anand was going through because we were just working and anand had to uh, find the balance between getting rest and also you know like digesting all the work that the four grandmasters were providing him and to play with so much of tension so his work was uh, just uncomparable to what what we were doing So coming back to my question, Anand. So many times it happened that around ten o'clock you would sign off, you would say good night and go to your room. Perfectly aware that we don't have a single idea. We have no clue what we are going to play. How it is possible to get a good night sleep with when you are going that you know like there's we still have nothing and maybe you are trailing by one point. How you manage to get this thought out of your mind, like this tension and there is this no idea yet. well look as as we as i said i many uh, acknowledge in the book as well in that match um that match was a failure it was a failure of our imagination it was the failure of our creativity and somehow our whole, our, our whole approach uh, hit a wall and um but i knew i knew even when i went to sleep i knew that by morning you guys will have something and you maybe you'll tell me look it's not great but you can do this and there are, he has to find three difficult moves and uh, you do it and you come back <laughs> so uh, i would have a little i would have something but um, more importantly while sometimes that's how uh, life is you play events or you you do things where nothing is going right but um, first of all you still have to do you have to go still do your job um and second i was i felt grateful to you guys i mean um, maybe we were not successful but uh, you guys were putting yourself out a lot for me yeah and uh, <coughs> equ- equally aruna you know it's easy to get in this feel of uh, i'm i've got to uh, i expect more and the guys are not delivering but uh, i i felt very grateful for what you guys did and uh, and look the story of the eight after the seventh game it was a disaster i came back to the room and very quickly i understood that even i could not last till 10 o'clock so there was no point working that evening mm-hmm. uh, we had dinner and then i i left the room and i vanished uh, i went for a walk here i came back and uh, i moaned for a while i tried distracting myself didn't work well all the usual stuff did sleep the whole night and um, i came in at the morning and the, the morning and i found that uh, You guys have actually managed to squeeze some life out of the Grunfeld, right? That F3 Grunfeld. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It was, it was not at the level that we we would all have liked. Because everywhere there are holes, mm-hmm. but but you guys have been flat out till seven in the morning. Yeah. And um, and honestly, sometimes you feel genuinely grateful that uh, people are putting themselves out like this for you. I mean, we're all good friends, but even friendship has limits. But you guys were. Uh, busting yourselves uh, and uh, the idea was decent enough so i felt well let me get into it so i mean it would be really silly if i get a winning position because i forgot to check that in the morning i mean forgot to check that line i blew it so i, I tried to and very soon i understood i'm not going to get all the details right right the variations and again your original story uh, those variations impressed me a lot then and now already engines So it's a lot of stuff. Yeah. But, yeah. You know, to go back to your earlier question, and uh, I felt grateful, and already my attitude had changed. Um, once you're one point down with only a few games to go, mm-hmm. your attitude is more positive. You don't have anything to lose because 
in the normal, uh, if the match continues as it has been going, then I'm resigning the title and going home because uh, we, are, we are not put pressure with white. We are not uh, getting chances with black, and uh, he's got a one point lead. This is the so I was going to the board, and automatically your attitude becomes more positive. You're willing to take risks. Uh, you're willing to gamble in every game because uh, you're desperate. And uh, so it's a combination of all these factors. But still, when I entered the game, I expected to come back. Uh, I expected that Gelfand would have solved this problem or that problem, and uh, our idea would fall flat. And of course, Gelfand played a, a line that uh, we have not studied at all. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, so we have not studied D5. We, he played uh, C5 and... Uh, yeah. Okay, we briefly knew that this knight e2, knight c3 and some half ideas, but uh, that was about it. No, but it was ridiculous because, uh, <laughs> I mean, if I may exaggerate uh, what Rustam told me, it was something like, <laughs> knight c3 is not working, so put the other knight in c3. <laughs> and, and, you know, at least if you put the other knight in c3, maybe he will get confused or something like that. You know, and, <clears throat> but at, at that point, at that point, we thought this line is so unlikely that that's enough, and um, um, and so it went. But um, and again, I mentioned this in the book. Um, I can talk about, I can praise myself to the skies, but uh, I was delivered by a miracle. Now, in order for that miracle to happen, I was maybe the smallest part. You guys had to spend the whole day and to get me into some shape to at least believe that I have a chance. Uh -huh. um, you know, Aruna had to put up with my morning all night. And yeah. all I had to do was to make 17 moves and, and calculate one tactic. And uh, yeah, it, it it's a miracle that he, it's a miracle that he blundered. And it's a real pity for him, but uh, I gratefully took the gift. And uh, I mean, I still have the feeling that uh, my situation at that point was like the undeserved. You know, you know, talking about this night, uh, I, we should definitely admit to you that uh, uh, around I think five thirty in the morning or five o'clock in the morning, we still still did not have any idea. We had no clue what we are going to offer to you. And I remember, uh, okay, we are staying in very nice area, right? So we decided to go for a walk around five o'clock or something <laughs> like this, four of us. And uh, not only in that particular round. Many rounds we used to have this kind of. I'm finding this. I'm finding this out now. But anyway, go on. Yeah, yeah. So not only in that particular round, but many rounds we used to have that this heated discussion between seconds, uh, who who will have different opinion, whether to tell you certain line is a problem or to hide from you, so that you have full confidence while going, and this has happened throughout the match number of times. So. Uh, I'm just first time I think I'm revealing, uh, admitting this uh, also on the record that number of times it has happened, we found, yeah, there is some problem. But should we tell this? Because first, if we show the problem, then you will, you might have the tendency to just look at the problem and look at uh, and miss the up upside. So we would try to fill you in with lots of upside. And towards the end, somehow Rustam will fill in, yeah, by the way, Vishy, you know, like there is this and then you put the other night there. So something like that. So, yeah, yeah. Or, uh, Rust you know, half the time our preparation was some unprintable joke of Rustam and, you know, go to the board and that's it. Yeah. So, uh, but, you know, that's that's how it is sometimes. You, uh, it's not only what you do when you have good ideas. Sometimes you have to make do when you have nothing. Absolutely. And, uh, uh, but, our, but our team, uh, well, certainly did amazing stuff. So. Yeah, there is one thing that I want to uh, emphasize to the to the viewers uh, that when we say that you know we walk for uh, whatever thirteen hours, fourteen hours, sometimes till seven in the morning we walk. Uh, I want to emphasize on this during my work with Anand all these years, not a single time he said that you know you have to walk till this hour. We had complete liberty. I mean, not not even single time. Whatever we did for Anand and whatever I did, whatever I worked for Anand, it all happened because of his personality, his 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 modesty. You know, we, we just liked him, so we walked. We just gave our heart. So I think that is what I uh, I always appreciated in you. There was there was never I never felt Anand as boss. You know, like it 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 never occurred to me that yeah he has assigned me some work, so I have to do it. So for me it was like it is Anand, and I have to do it for him because he is what he is. An amazing personality. Uh, Anand, before we, uh, 
yeah thank, thanks for being you I'll, I'll, I'll say this forever thanks for being you not only as a chess player but as a human being I have learned tremendous from you you and both Aruna uh, would you mind if we uh, go to chess.com and I want to uh, show our uh, famous preparation uh, the, the, ah, the king c3 yeah, yeah. so I'll, I'll, uh, yeah sure yeah. let me sign in Okay, now it should be there. Okay, so I'll send you the invitation. One second, I'm just getting into that. Sure. Like chess, and then uh, you'll tell me. Yeah. You're there, yeah? I'm there. Okay. I don't see your message yet. Uh, you got it now? Yeah. Great. So, uh, yeah, let us think. I'll just take the position. Uh, do you see the position now? Yes. Yeah, okay. No, I, I see the notation. But you have printed the, you have to, yeah, you have put the game, but not our line, right? Yeah, yeah, no, our line will get there. Yeah. Ah, but before before I go there, just there's just one 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 last question I wanted to ask. So to the viewers, many of uh, many of you, uh, hang on, yeah. So to the viewers, many of you uh, who do not know what we prepared against uh, one e4 uh, in these three matches. So I will just uh, quickly tell what we saw. So for uh, for Kramnik match, this is what we prepared. It's going to be a surprise for many people. Uh, this was our preparation for Kramnik match. Dragon, seriously. And for Topolov match, against E4. Our preparation was oops, yeah. French Rubinstein. Uh, I am sure those uh, who has not read Anand Files where it is already mentioned, uh, this would come as a shock. And to make things worse, against Gelfand, I don't think we had any preparation at all against E4. I have no idea what we are even planning. We just assume that Gelfand will never play E4. So, uh, there is one question that I wanted to ask Anand. Anand. Uh, so, the amount of work we did, like including you obviously, to these lines, especially French Rubenstein, is insurmountable, huge. The other day I was checking, okay, we did not get a chance uh, to play these lines in World Championship match because nobody played E4, neither Kramnik, uh, Topolov or uh, Gelfand. But... Uh, I was checking your games after World Championship match and I could not find a single Dragon game or a French game. So I want to ask you in hindsight, would you consider this as a waste of time or would you take it in such a way that uh, this was a project, it was meant for that particular match and it gave you confidence, It you got the result and that was it. I would say that for uh, the Kramnik match, the problem was, you know, given that we ourselves, I had switched from E4 to D4 for this match. Mm -hmm. It was a quite um, careless to not having considered at all that Kramnik could shift. Mm -hmm. But, uh, I mean, he could have shifted the same way and shifted in the reverse direction and then we'd be right back where. But um, I genuinely remember... Um, telling someone, and this is the problem, we told someone that um, we should have some sort of line for E4 and everyone in the room agreed. Uh -huh. And then everyone decided that someone else was going to get this work done. So this became one of these classic problems that everyone felt should be done, but nobody was going to do. Right. And then in, uh, uh, we actually got to uh, 
uh, born and then realized that no one has still done it. And uh, then we panicked and we came up with the dragon. Well, also we panicked and, uh, because we, we got to know the seconds. Yeah, It was Fresinet, uh, Leko and Rublevsky. Most of them are E4 players. So that was also another yeah. reason of panic. Correct. And so we, we got... We got this idea that you, I'll play the dragon, but for me it was always clear of, I always felt our dragon work then was not that detailed. Sure. It was always supposed to be, this is the one opening he could never have thought of. Mm -hmm. So you get away with this crap and, uh, and you know, we have put the magic Ripka on uh, critical position. these lines, so they, they won't, they won't lose right away and you know, you're on your own. Yeah. I never felt the dragon was really serious work. And Kazim lost to Taimur, though he had polished it and uh, he done it, but he lost to Taimur, if I remember correctly. Yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah. And then um, for the Topolo match, the um, Open Spanish and the Rubinstein was uh, uh, definitely a higher quality because we had actually considered the Planning probability play, yeah. that Topolo would play E4. Uh -huh. But having spent so much time on that, uh, somehow, uh, we were not, I was not in the mood to use it because the Rubinstein turned out to be depressing and uh, uh, well, I can say that many years later, some seven or eight years later, I started playing open Spanish. So, yeah. uh, and um, for the girlfriend match, yeah, we didn't even bother pretending. No, we just did not pretend. But, um, but every once in a while, there was a clever guess. If you remember game one, Mm -hmm. In the Kramnik match, mm -hmm. I actually, I either the previous evening or on one of the rest days before the first round, mm -hmm. I suddenly told myself, what if he does the Extensive exchange lab. Spanish? Yeah. Maybe I exchange Spanish. Maybe, it's 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 maybe it was a, even in the morning. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then I, I private, I, I knew that by now to give you lines and to get back lines would be ridiculous. Mm -hmm. So I just looked at my notes and I found this one pawn sack and I thought, Okay, I'll manage. And luckily he played it and I got this one line in and because I checked that one line, at least I didn't uh, do something crazy. Hey, and, I, I, uh, I didn't know this. This is the line that, that you checked uh, on your own, yeah? This particular uh, Extens Lab game one? That, that's, how, that's how I recall it. But I will oh. be... Mm -hmm. No, very much possible. Very much possible. Yeah, the, the mists of time have taken over. But uh, my, I, my feeling is that I checked some old analysis I had my own. Mm -hmm. I put a great engine on it and yeah. uh, checked few moves and then thought, uh, fine, at least. I think the problem in something like the exchange uh, slab is that if your opponent plays it and then you don't really know what you're supposed to do and then you start hesitating and then you and you finally play a line that uh, is superficially, you only studied superficially and it turns out to be bad. You know, there are, there are, there are worst yeah. case scenarios. Mm -hmm. uh, mine was amongst the best. I had one good line. It was uh, it. It didn't collapse uh, at a superficial level. It, you had to go quite deep, mm -hmm. if at all. Mm -hmm. And um, it, I survived that game, but uh, that was a vulnerable point as well. Yeah, yeah, sure. No, we we were. I still remember the first game when he played CD five. We were like, oh god, we didn't, you know, like we didn't spend that much time. This is not. This is not nice at all. Yeah. So yeah, getting back to. Uh, I mean, that's why I always tell people, I mean, even the, the best match, I mean, that is my most successful match in my life. And uh, had one thing been different this way or that way, it could have easily been some other way. Sure. Yeah, so uh, getting back to this uh, girlfriend thing. Uh, so, yeah, this is how yeah. it went. Uh, Yeah, so I remember this particular incident like uh, <coughs> when a uh, tiebreak match was supposed to take place and we had we had some time and I still remember I was given a task uh, that if I can find a refutation on E5 while the rest of the team works on uh, from uh, black side and if I find a refutation here or interesting idea, okay, refutation is too strong. If I find uh, some kind of interesting idea, then the team will work on E4. And if I don't find, like let's say within four hours or whatever time uh, at that time we had uh, in, in, the, in the evening, then the team will try to work on Grunfield F3. Very luckily, there was one idea that, uh, that was found, which is what happened in the game. Uh, 
First, let me tell what Gelfand played here. So there are two moves in this position, uh, d6 and f6. Uh, Gelfand played d6. And then, uh, yeah, the, we were prepared uh, somewhere until here. Yeah, somewhere until here. And we considered this position to be pleasant for white. And Anon won a nice game. But the reason why I am uh, showing this to, uh, to the audience is that there was a moment where we were not sure after d4, which is a novelty, if Gelfand will play d6 or f6. And uh, I just want to show how flexible Anand is, uh, how he was ready to play such a risky line, if I, if I can call it, in a World Championship match rapid game. So we saw f6. The idea was knight f3. Queen takes e4 check. Yeah. Yeah. King, ah, no. Yeah. King d2 threatening rook e1. Knight e7. Rook e1. Here there we analyzed I analyzed initially two moves, queen g6 and queen f5. If queen g6, the idea was to play king c3, tuck in the king here. If uh, black plays a4, uh, a5, we go a4. And the point is, <coughs> uh, there is a pin, and uh, black is unable to play king f7 because uh, this sort of traps the queen. So then, ah, was, forgotten this detail. Ah, uh, you forgot this one. Yeah. So then there was this move that okay, maybe he'll put the queen on f5 so that after king f7, knight h4, uh, the queen is not trapped. And I, I told Lanon it's the same idea. Like you come uh, king c3 and put the king on b2, and after a5 you have a4. <coughs> when I showed him this. He was like, yeah, sure, I can play this and uh, just, can you just check what happens for c4? And I was a little bit taken back because I did not check this line. I saw every other thing and there was also a bit psychological thing because uh, one of the games, uh, Gelfand but played. come on, this. game 12, game 12, he played c4. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah that's, that's what I was going to say that it was a bit embarrassing that I, <clears throat> for the second time, missing c4 because on game 12, uh, Gelfand c4 was clearly missed by the team. So I remember at this point the entire team joined and together we found the following line uh, which is one of the best opening uh, you know from aesthetical point of view which I have ever seen. So we came to the conclusion that king into c4 is the best move here and uh, once again today morning I checked this is indeed the best move. The idea is uh, now white wants to come back here again. So giving a check will not do anything and this knight is pinned. So, so basically white is coming back. So the only way to stop is to play queen a5. And now black is threatening one movement. And now this time white comes other way around. Now he wants to get here. So we check this. Is there a queen a2 coming somewhere? Queen a2. Well, C B three and Queen A two, no. Ah, yeah, yeah, you, oh, 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 yeah, yeah, sure, but I, I yeah, you. you okay, yeah, you're exactly. getting there. Yeah. And B A two was the move. We said Queen C two. Check here. This was our analysis, guys, for World Championship Rapid uh, match. I mean, who could imagine looking at this position <coughs> that this king actually went all the way to c4 and oh, sorry, and then came back and is in g1 yes. and is in g1 and uh, yeah, I'm just I am still amazed that uh, Anand, you actually agreed to play this. You know, you sort of trusted us. Uh, that this is actually fine and you can go ahead and when everything is at stake, when you're playing World Championship match in Rapid, God knows what might come and you actually agreed to play this. Uh, but it's pretty decent odds. I mean, I have a king on g1, I am only a piece down and that uh, king is floating around. And on top of that, instead of rook b1, I have a draw with queen e6, c6 check back. If I at the board, I mean, I could easily get to that point and then if Gelfand uh, finds his way perfectly, uh, I could still take a draw. You don't get that kind of gem. So, uh, 
to be honest, uh, if you had given me an idea like this in every game before the Maya game, I would have played it 12, all 12 games. Uh, I I think there is much scarier stuff that you guys made me do, but this wasn't one of them. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, thank you, Anand. I really, uh, I wanted to, uh, I told you that the, the shows will be like for half an hour, but I dragged it for long. But thank you so much for being patient with me as always and uh, you know to, to be there for such long time and oh, uh, next episode I want to announce guys uh, right away uh, next episode is going to be very special it's going to be the family episode where Aruna will also join us we'll, we'll have lots of fun and lots of interesting questions uh, alright Anand thank you thank you so much once again thanks again bye 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 everyone Wow, what 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 a show! Uh, I I can never thank Anand uh, enough for for this. Yeah, guys, I saw the chats and uh, there were so many questions I was asking, and uh, I could not take all the questions. But uh, th thanks for thanks for being so nice. Thanks for uh, cooperating. Uh, my our next show will be uh, Saturday. Uh, I'll I'll let you know the time. Uh, mostly it will be around five o'clock with Aruna on the show. And uh, before I sign off, I want to say a uh, few things. Uh, number one, which I said before also, if you, in case if you have not read this book, Mind Masters, please go ahead and uh, buy this. This should be available in uh, Kindle and as well as hard copy right now. And those who want to know about more about the match, uh, there is also a fantastic book, Anand Files, uh, which covers uh, the entire match preparation. So I strongly recommend both the books for all the readers out there. Uh, that will be it guys, uh, see you soon. If you like the videos, uh, please do subscribe. And if you if you don't like it or if you want me to improve somewhere, please put in the comments, I will, I will try to improve them. Uh, bye bye guys.